Have I told you just how much I love scary movies? I love the thrill of suspense building in scenes. I love getting goosebumps much like the next guy. And I love the adrenaline rush. But I also have to admit that I do have a soft spot for what is deemed as either downright terrible or misunderstood films. In today's video, we are going to delve into a misunderstood movie from a time where movies did struggle. Today, I want to talk about one film that caught my eye recently. For centuries, a secret has been buried beneath the streets of London. Something ageless, something powerful, something beyond your deepest fears. Wes Craven presents Dracula 2000. Dracula, he's real. What was Dracula 2000? What was the film's story? What was this bold new take that other iterations of Dracula himself or other adaptations that hadn't been seen in the vampire genre? What could this movie have done to have been so creative or even revolutionary? The fuck are you out of your damn mind? Is that we're about to find out together. So grab yourself some popcorn or finish whatever it is you're doing because trust me, you don't want to miss this video. Rather than this movie just being copy, rinse, repeat of the classic Bram Stoker trope, why not try to modernize it? But give it that 2000s feel if you know what I mean. What the you? With this movie still being inspired by the classic Bram Stoker tale and just adding in that new take for modern audiences for the new generation and also Wes Craven, this movie had so much potential but somehow managed to miss the mark. What this movie did that I do like, however, was sticking to the classic vampire trope, but also having fun with it and running wild. For those of you that don't know anything about the vampire genre... Well, first of all, they're not romantic, alright? It's not like they're a bunch of fucking hopping around in rented formal wear and seducing everybody in sight with cheesy Euro trash accents, alright? Let me spice it up a notch before we continue on this journey. Don't sing if you want to live long. They have no use for your song. You're dead, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead and out of this world. Now I hope and compassion is gone. You've sold out your dream to the world. Stay dead, stay dead, stay dead. You're dead and out of this world. So, hey, it's that guy Frankie, yours truly, and today doing some vampire 101 type of shit. We're gonna be hunting down some vampires. So what's the first thing you know about killing vampires, cameraman? What do you know? Um, honestly, I just, uh, I've watched a lot of movies. Uh, Silver, right? So you got the basics, you know? Silver, fucking this piece of shit right here. And then, of course, this big fucking guy right here. All you gotta do is get a really, uh, you gotta get a really good shot at their head and, you know, decapitate the fuck out of them. You gotta, you gotta, gotta good shot, you know? Yeah, it's a really good fucking sword. Uh, supposedly came from Aber Van Helsing. Uh, I don't, I don't know how the fuck I got it. Do you know anything else about killing vampires, though, man? I'm gonna be on your ass about this, because once we go in there, if you fucking die on me, if you fucking die on me, I swear to God. I mean, you've got to carry, like, some crosses with you, right? I got my rosary on me, you know, from my grandma, but, uh, you know, maybe some garlic. I got garlic in my sh in my shoes, in my, in my socks. So, garlic only tends to piss them off more, and that's only in the movies. As far as it comes to crucifixes, you don't know if they're Jewish. Todos mis antepasados son judíos. 
Ah, sí? Pues mira lo que te... You wanna come at me, son? They call me the Count Dracula because I count how many bitches I call you back, yo! You don't know if they're atheists. Last thing you want to do is piss them off, so a crucifix is not really the best option. Now, if you want to survive a fucking vampire attack, all you gotta do is get most of your knowledge from the fucking books. The classics, my guy. The classics. That's how I know my shit. Yeah. Any questions? Um, no, I think I got it covered, honestly. I feel uh, pretty relaxed. Alright, well I'm gonna be going in first because I'm pretty sure you're probably gonna fucking die if you go in running head first. So uh -oh. let me, uh -oh. the hero, go in there. Uh, Guns are blazing. Yeah, yeah man. Alright, this is it. Don't get scared now, because once we go in there, camera guy, there's gonna be a lot of fucking bodies going everywhere for all I fucking know. I'm not here to fuck some vampires, but I'm here to kill some fucking vampires. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to do either. We'll see, we'll see. I don't need you to bitch out on me either, man, because I'm gonna I'm need some of that help. I, I can't do this alone. You've seen me. I'm like fucking four foot eight, 150 pounds for all I fucking know. I don't even know how much I fucking weigh. I haven't gone to the gym as much, but I'm gonna probably get my ass kicked. And I can't. I can't, I can't save to people. Dude, if there's a hot chick one, I'm gonna fuck her. Alright, you ready? You ready for this shit? Yeah. Alright, let's go in. Damn, these vampires got some really good lights. Wish I had this shit back at my condo, but we don't. Wait, what the? Danny DeVito? Oh god! Oh god! Danny! Good. Let's get back into this video. Dracula 2000 is centered around the legendary Van Helsing character himself, but more specifically, his family. While the Slayer himself is not the main character, the main character of the story is essentially his daughter, Mary. It still tries its best to flesh out its cast, but doesn't utilize them to their full potential. In this new story, Abraham, Matthew, whatever name he takes, we come to find out that the legendary vampire slayer himself, Abraham, is the only true Van Helsing that's lived through the decades hunting Dracula. While he is still a slayer at heart, he hasn't found a means to rid the world of Dracula, as he is unlike the other creatures, almost unkillable. Von Helsing gets the help of local townspeople once he's in London, England, to help capture the monster and imprison him, locking him away while trapping the creature works. It comes with a price as Van Helsing essentially becomes the monster's keeper and he will not rest until he finds a true way to kill Dracula. We come to find out that the only reason Van Helsing's been alive was due to Dracula's very own blood. And now I know what you're thinking. You're probably wondering as to how Van Helsing didn't contract vampirism and that's one thing that's one thing that always questioned me while watching the movie but von helsing much like abraham set tracking in a character inspired by him in guillermo del toro's the strain von helsing did a thing similar where instead of just letting dracula infect him with the plague he managed to do the unthinkable and inject Dracula's blood into that of a leech and find a way to inject himself with a blood without tainting himself, still keeping the abilities of at least living eternal life but not being as strong. While he was quick, his old age did catch up to him eventually. But there's only so much that Von Helsing can do to survive even being 
a vampire slayer. So he creates another persona for himself. By night, he is the hunter. But by day, he is an antiques dealer. We learn that throughout the years, Van Helsing would do whatever he could, whether it was destroying all vampires, with one famous one being Nosferatu. The man would still do his best to keep a public image for himself, to try and keep himself afloat, to even raising his own family. Or would he? As the story suggests, Van Helsing does have a family, but because of his secret life, there's only so much you can do to keep that secret life a secret. Van Helsing's wife would later take their daughter and leave him going into the likes of Scotland, Canada, to then eventually settling in the US. More specifically, New Orleans. Even though they had fled from Van Helsing to try and find a new way of life, Mary's mother would be haunted by Van Helsing's past. Her mother would do her best as to not talk about the past, nor inform her of what exactly happened. Mary's mother would have dreams in a sense, as we come to find out during a confessional scene that the week before her death, Mary's mother was haunted spiritually, afraid for Mary because whoever it was haunting her knew that this would be a battle for Mary's own soul. But why would Dracula need her soul? Could it be a revenge plot from Dracula himself doing this out of spite to Van Helsing, the man who imprisoned him? Rather, Dracula being in search for a new bride. Throughout countless adaptations in any media we see, Dracula is always presented as a gentleman, almost. Somehow, someway, seducing the likes of men and women, none can resist his temptation, and many fall to him. We've seen this in the likes of Francis Ford Coppola's own film, to the likes of Bela Lugosi's portrayal, and Richard Roxborough in Stephen Summers' best vampire hunting movie to date. Why does he need another bride? As in Dracula's own eyes, he wants the perfect vampire. He wants the perfect bride, one born, not bitten and infected by the plague. And because Mary is the daughter of Van Helsing, and Van Helsing did inject himself with Dracula's own blood, his DNA mixed with his, this would cause her to be perfect in Dracula's own eyes. Dracula 2000 is kind of like your typical Race Against Time movie before it's all too late and knowing that it's a horror movie, it tries to drive the stakes up with the estranged family dynamic and of course, the best twist in all of vampire media since the likes of John Carpenter's Vampires. The first vampire. Religion has always had a significant importance in the horror genre. Whether the typical possession film, cult flicks, or even your classic slasher or even creature films, there's this usual good against evil trope, where good and evil are always fighting with a light eventually prevailing or themes of losing faith, and this film delivers with its messages, its themes, and metaphors. Knowing that this isn't the greatest vampire movie out there, it still did an outstanding job at portraying the first ever vampire in all of history. In this film, that being Judas Iscariot. Almost all adaptations of Dracula have the legendary character as a count living in Transylvania praying on the week, waiting for his next meal. 
It's always cool, however, seeing new takes with some like Dracula Untold that was done dirty following Vlad the Impaler. To, wait, what am I talking about? The man is usually just a count in almost every, you know, film he's in. Yeah. It's always amazing seeing different adaptations of Dracula or even the first vampire. The film's co-writer and director Patrick Lussier came up with setting Dracula as Judas and did a phenomenal job. As the writing may not have been the best, this new take for the vampire was brilliant. This vampire is repulsed by silver and the light, making it his people's weakness, but for him, it only enrages the creature. Silver hurts him, but doesn't kill him. He's one bad muchacho, and it helps that he's played by Gerard Butler, who did his best and had fun with the character as seen in behind-the-scenes footage of the film. Gerard, as Judas, is honestly the best part of the film, aside from Christopher Plummer as Helsing. Through Judas, we see his guilt and sadness of the betrayal he commits to his best friend, Jesus Christ. Now it's no Oscar-worthy performance because let's face it guys, Gerard Butler is no Sharon Stone, but his emotions make you feel for Judas and bring the character to life that later sequels in this unnecessary franchise would go with recasts that didn't even come close. Even though Dracula hardly talks, the scenes he shares with Mary and Von Helsing himself are special, as we get to briefly learn and witness his betrayal through his very own eyes. After betraying the Son of God for gold and silver, Judas was left heartbroken and angry with himself. Due to his own actions, Judas wanted to punish himself and seek forgiveness from the Lord by hanging himself, but was instead cursed. God would curse Judas to roam for all eternity, and from there, Judas would become the very first vampire. But how do you kill what cannot be killed? That's where we segue to what ruined Dracula 2000. Remember earlier when I talked about the film's cast? Oh wait, that's right, I actually didn't because I forgot to go on about the cast in this film. Let me quickly bring you up to speed. Dracula 2000's cast, although small, it was nice, and it could have done better as the writing just wasn't the best for certain individuals. Some characters wouldn't even get enough screen time for their presence or even just done dirty for what many had expected. While I am happy that the movie did get rid of the biggest piece of shit out there, and you know, I know, I've said this phrase before, uh, separate the art from the artist, but when it comes to a piece of shit like Danny Masterson, there is no separating him from his art because in almost every art form he's done, he's basically just himself. A piece of shit. But even then, there just aren't as many memorable performances throughout the film unless your name is Gerard Butler or Christopher Plummer. Dracula 2000 does try, but the only standout performances again are both Van Helsing, who's not even the main character, but Judas who also barely gets in a bit of dialogue. The movie does try to build up this like a father to a son dynamic between Von Helsing and his assistant Simon, played by Johnny Lee Miller, known for projects such as Train Spotting, Hackers, and even one of my personal favorites, Dark Shadows. The chemistry between both actors is there, but it left me wanting to see more between them, whether it's destroying all vampires like the Frog Brothers, or having a Yondu and Star Lord esque moment between them together. Their chemistry was just so perfect, and seeing them throughout the first act of the film was honestly cool, but <sighs> there was just a lot left on the table that we didn't get to witness. Other problems that I had in this movie involved both Van Helsing and his daughter, as it said they have an estranged relationship, and you know, don't get me wrong, they do it decently, 
what the story is going for in that estranged family dynamic is cool, but what happens next is just downright terrible. In the case of Dracula 2000, this is what really pissed me off for the film. Granted, I love the movie. It's my guilty pleasure. I think it's a good movie at best, but it is pretty bad in other departments. This one being one. Because how do you kill off Van Helsing off screen, a legendary character in media. Van Helsing is such a popular character in almost all forms of vampire media. He's been portrayed countless times to even having shows built around the Van Helsing name with other vampire slayers. It's not that I don't mind seeing Van Helsing die, it's just the way that they do it. It'd be like taking a character like Spider-Man and just killing him off screen rather than seeing him go out defending New York or even just defending his friends and family. And that's how I felt. I felt like a huge gut punch hit me. I felt like a huge sucker punch come out of nowhere on me. It was just so pointless. Since he really wasn't the main character and Christopher Glimmer being the biggest name they had in this movie, you can pretty much tell just where some of the money of the budget went to. And that's just where the movie kind of feels lackluster as well as it just falls onto Mary's shoulders, played by Justine Wall. and don't get me wrong, I don't hate the actress. The actress seems cool and all. But the acting in the film sometimes just feels kind of meh. Even for Final Girl standards, as Final Girls are the best part about horror movies! I don't like the writing of her character as much because she just feels like she's there. In some moments, we do feel pity for her. We do feel scared for her because we want to see her live. But other times, it just feels like, again, meh. In most pieces of horror media out there as well, it's generally kind of known that the final girls aren't necessarily dumb. Granted, they make mistakes, but they are on their A-game. Mary is kind of just driving the plot as it goes after her father's death, and it only really shines towards the end when she pulls a Judas on Judas himself. And this is kind of where it loses me again, because it's, it's, it's cool seeing it and understanding the message, especially because Dracula can't die, but still dies at the end? He he hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. The only way for Dracula to truly die is for him to seek forgiveness and to be forgiven. He has to repent for the sins that he had committed. And while he had tried seeking forgiveness, it didn't help that he tried killing himself. With him now being a vampire, there's really nothing that can hurt him. While, again, Silver and all this pisses him off doesn't kill him. Van Helsing has spent so much time trying to find many ways to destroy the creature and it literally just took sunlight. And now granted, I don't know if Dracula can withstand the sun, but the fact that it came with forgiveness in a really cool metaphorical way where he's basically hung with Jesus, it's a cool scene and all, but like, I don't know, the fact that it took the sun to beat Dracula when Van Helsing had been fighting him for so long, only for it to be sun? I'm pretty sure it wasn't just the sun, though. That's probably just me going off, off the walls right there. It has to be that forgiveness message that's also brought back in the later sequels that are barely even connected to it, other than it just being the same IP, but yeah. From there, the movie ends with mary van helsing basically becoming a wish version of kate beckinsale in underworld a very flat out ending kind of wish the movie would have dragged out more or at least had just a little bit more cash we could have seen plumber versus dracula i would have wanted to see both of them go at it even knowing that plumber was old and that van helsing is old i, I don't know maybe i would have wanted to see a twist where plumber gives into vampirism and tries to fight him head on only to die that way I think to me, that would be an even more badass way, just for that character to go out. There were other problems that I did have with this film. This movie just divided itself and it just felt like it wanted to be a whole lot but didn't know what it really wanted to be at times either. At times, the movie wanted to be both bold and serious, with the likes of Van Helsing and the religious themes and elements, yet at other times it just came off super corny and cheesy and you know, I love campy flicks. I'm a guy that loves 
Friday the 13th, A Nightmare on Elm Street. I defended the likes of Venom, Let There Be Carnage, to even Halloween Kills, but when a horror movie does try to be serious, it needs to at least try to balance itself. Otherwise, it's just going to come at the expense of itself and possibly ruin or taint it. While it may live as a cult classic later on, there are some that are just so bad that they're completely unwatchable, but luckily for the likes of Dracula 2000, it's a popcorn movie you can still watch because it's just so fun watching it still to this day. Most reviews for this movie say that it's not entertaining, but I beg to differ because again, even though it pisses me off at times, it gets a reaction out of you and it's just so fun, it's bad at many times, but it's also just really good when it tries to have a sense of story and uniqueness to it. You can watch the film without being bored in some areas, but I mainly see it as a movie with such potential that was left underutilized compared to other creature features at the time like Van Helsing and The Mummy. Dracula 2000 fails more in its story department and fleshing out its key cast and characters and not making as many good decisions with <coughs> the big characters in the movie. And, you know, it doesn't have as many memorable moments aside from one <laughs> line that I never understood until I rewatched it where Dracula says he doesn't drink coffee specifically. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, it's just there. Hey, I still think you should watch this movie because it's one that if you feel bored or you want something different from your usual watch, why not just have fun and watch it? It can't be worse than anything else out there. Hell, I watch Sharknado and those movies are so bad they're good. How about you watch them too? Shout out to Mike DeGrazia, the man that made the posters, because that man is an amazing human being. Dracula 2000 is a product of its time. A cheesy, campy horror fest that compared to today's time, wouldn't be as cherished or enjoyed. Dracula 2000 is a horror movie you need to watch, and I hope you do, because it has this charm to it that most horror films lack in that factor and I'm hoping you love it and if you don't that's awesome if you hate it that's fine but why not take a chance just risking it and watching something new than your usual watch I gotta give this film you know a 6 out of 10 even if it earns a, a stake through my heart you know shot through the heart and I'm to blame I give reviews a bad name yeah Yeah, how do you like it? Man! Ugh. Ugh. Uh. Yeah. Eat lead, you stupid vamp. Okay, first off, before we start, I just want to apologize for killing the cameraman. I didn't know he was going to document any of this, so... So, uh, Oops. you let Frankie win? Yeah, here's the funny thing. That guy's kind of funny, you know. Uh, you know, it was actually this guy's idea to let him win. But well, how? How aren't you guys, uh... Dead? That's our specialty. Yeah, you know, we have these things, you know, a little bit of mind control, a little bit of strength, and having fast with giant oh, penis. We have the ability to fake our death. Oh, like Loki. Um, no, where do you think that bozo learned his mischief from? Come on, I'm gonna fix that light. It's never fixed around you. Oh, yeah, you know, 
that steak, it did hurt a little bit. Um, you know, most steaks hurt anyways, but I hurt a little bit. You know, considering it was made out of plastic, you know. Yeah, it was <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah, that little dude knows how to do everything but execute. Fucker ruined my favorite fit tonight, and it's the blood rain. Please subscribe to the That Guy Frankie YouTube channel. Thank you and goodbye. Stay dead, stay dead, stay dead. You're dead and out of this world.